If you've already built a Squarespace website, you probably know the basics like how to change your font or change up some of the colors, but there are a lot more things you can do to customize the look of your Squarespace website with just a little bit of code. My name is Becca Harpain, and I am the CSS super nerd behind InsideTheSquare.co. I teach Squarespacers around the globe how to customize their websites with a little thing called CSS. In this training, I'm gonna teach you what CSS is, how it works with Squarespace, how to install it in Squarespace, and we'll also talk about why your version and theme matters oh so much when you're customizing with code. Before we dig into anything, I do wanna mention, the term Squarespace is a trademark of Squarespace Incorporated. This video is not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just a huge fan of Squarespace, so I love to teach other people how to customize it. So now that we've got that stuff out of the way, let's dig in. What exactly is CSS? and how does it work with Squarespace? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and it's how a computer browser knows what the content of a website should look like. It's what tells the computer browser that this button should have this big of a border, or this image should have a grayscale filter applied to it. CSS is the style. It's in the name, Cascading Style Sheet. Squarespace creates your CSS file automatically. Anytime you assign a font using your font menu or a color using the color menu, it updates your main CSS file for you. However, with Squarespace, we can add custom code to overwrite those settings. So why would you need custom code? Custom CSS is for cool things like hover effects, changing different colors and adding borders to stuff, or even changing up the layouts. Maybe you want to adjust the font size, but only on a mobile device? We can do that with custom CSS. I do wanna mention before you start playing with any code, even though I teach CSS for a living, I still recommend you do all changes you possibly can using the built-in menu. Because with CSS, we're overriding things. So we're gonna make a computer browser read a little bit of extra code or do some extra work. You wanna to try to minimize that extra work as much as possible. So whenever possible, use the main settings available in Squarespace. But again, for cool things like hover effects or a mobile font size, we've gotta use custom code for that. Now there are three things you need in every piece of CSS code. I like to think of it like a set of instructions that I'm giving the browser. I need to tell it three specific things. The first thing is I need to tell the browser what's the item I'm trying to change. The second thing is I'm telling the browser what part of this item am I trying to change. And the third thing I'm telling the browser is what I'm changing it to. So here's an example. Let's say I looked at this website here and I said, I want that button to be purple. In CSS, what that is is SQS block button element. That's the thing I wanna change. Background color, that's what I wanna change about it. Purple, that's what I wanna change it to. So again, it's the thing you wanna change, what part of it you wanna change, and what you want to change it to. And that's it, literally three things. As long as you're super specific, the computer browser is going to know what you wanna change and your site will look exactly the way that you want it to. Now the title of this video is Copy and Paste for Squarespace. And I wrote that because you can quite literally copy and paste codes that are out there on the World Wide Web and make them work for Squarespace. I created a free guide to go along with this training. You can find it at insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. If you're already there, you should look underneath this video and you'll find a button, click on that and you can access that PDF guide. Inside there, I have a bunch of codes that you can start playing with. These codes are super easy to copy and paste directly into Squarespace to update the look of your website. Now, where do you paste those codes? That's the next thing we've got to talk about. When you're about to add code to your website, I want you to ask yourself one specific question. Do I want this on every page? or do I want this on a single page? That is gonna make a huge difference in where you put your code. Most of the codes that I do on a website, things like installing a font or creating a hover effect for all of the buttons you'll find on my website, all of that I'm going to do inside my main custom CSS file. That you can find by navigating to design and then clicking on custom CSS. Now you can have all kinds of lines of code in here. You're not limited to just one. If you wanna add a new line of code, just hit enter on your keyboard or return and paste it there and you can keep going. I've got about 300 lines of code on my own website. So definitely play around with as many codes as you want. 
but that's where you put code for the entire website because that CSS file will load with every single page. So if you want to have all of the heading one fonts a specific size on a mobile device, add that code to design custom CSS. Now, what about code for a single page? You actually have two different options here and they are very different for two specific reasons. The first option that I prefer is page header code injection. On any page, you click on the page settings, you click on advanced and you'll see an option that says page header code injection. If I'm changing things about a specific page, like let's say I'm creating a landing page and I want to remove the main navigation or add a different footer, I would put that in page header code injection because the page header loads before everything else. So before my browser loads the navigation links, it already knows, hey, if I see this, I need to hide it or before the browser loads the footer of my website, it's gonna say, oh, wait a second, I need to use this footer, not the other one. So if you put it in the page header code injection, your change will load before all of the content on the page. So I think that's a great place to put it. However, this is only available in business and commerce plans, at least at the time of recording this. And it's not available for individual blog posts, individual products, individual events or individual portfolios, right? Quite a few options there that we don't have for changing a single page. So how do we change those pages? Or how do you change just one page if you're using a personal plan? You need to use an on-page code block. This is literally a block of content that you would add where you'd add text or where you'd add a form. Any place you'll see that very familiar blue plus sign to add something to your Squarespace website add a code block instead and paste your code there. Now, why did I not recommend that one right out of the gate? That's because your block of code is going to load with everything else. So if you're making quite a few changes, it might take a hot second to see them on the page. The browser might load the main navigation, then it'll load your code and say, oh, wait a second, I'm supposed to hide that. And then it'll get rid of it. Now, this happens relatively quickly, but it's not always a smooth transition. So I wanted to mention it. However, if you're on a personal plan or if you want to change an individual blog post or an individual product, you need to use a content block known as a code block. Again, that's clicking that blue plus sign, selecting code and then pasting your CSS here. One super important thing to mention before we move on, if you're using page header code injection or you're using one of those code blocks, you need to tell the browser this is a style code. You do that by adding these style brackets around your code itself. Inside the page header or a code block, you could also have HTML or JavaScript. The computer browser doesn't know this is CSS. So you have to tell it this is a style by placing it between those brackets. If you're using your main CSS file under design custom CSS, the computer already knows that's the only kind of code that's going to be in there. So be really careful for page header code injection or a code block, put your code between these style brackets. And if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, don't worry. I've listed out these in detail inside that free guide that I made for you. You've got all three of these install installation options as well as that style bracket. So don't worry if this is already too much. I've got it written down for you. We can keep going. There's one more important thing I wanted to talk about before you start copying and pasting those codes into your Squarespace website. That is what version you're using. Most of us are using the latest version of Squarespace known as version 7.1. 7.1 has some new features and we'll be getting all of the major updates from Squarespace. It's the latest version that we're working with. However, if you've built your website before 2020, you might be using version 7. Version 7 has some older design menus and they also have theme families, things like Brine and Bedford, and that makes a big difference in how you create code for your website. So you might be wondering, okay, cool, how do I tell? <laughs> there is one giveaway. That's the quickest way to tell what version you're using. If it says edit, you're using 7.1, the latest version. However, if there's just an arrow, that means you're in version seven, the older version of Squarespace. Now, if you are using the older version, your theme is super duper important because different themes 
have different code names. Inside that guide that I made to go along with this training, you've got a link to figure out exactly which theme family you're using so you'll know what codes to use on your own website. Now, what do I mean by code names here? Remember in the very beginning when we talked about specifying the thing you wanna change, and I said SQS block button element? In older versions of Squarespace, they use different names for different things. If you tell the browser to do something, but you're using the wrong code name or selector, if we wanna get technical here, the browser's not gonna know what you're trying to say. It's gonna be really confused. So make sure you're using the right code name for your theme. On all of my free code tutorials at insidethesquare.co, check out the top of the article. I'll specify which version I'm using. And if it's an older code, I'll tell you which theme as well. But pay attention at the very top there. I'll let you know if it's gonna work for the version that you're using, 7.1 or seven. Just look at the very top of the blog post there, okay? Alrighty, let's do a quick recap here. We've talked about what CSS is and how it works with Squarespace. It's cascading style sheet and it changes the look of your Squarespace website. All you have to do is tell a browser three things in your code. You have to tell the computer browser the thing you want to change, what you want to change about it, and what you want to change it to. In Squarespace, you can install CSS on every single page of your site by going to Design, Custom CSS, or you can make changes to an individual page using page header code injection, or an individual blog post product, event, or project. That was the other one. You can do that by using a code block. If you're doing page header code injection or a code block, you have to put it between those style brackets so a computer browser understands you're making a CSS change. And be super duper careful that you're using the right code for the right version or the right theme, depending upon when you built your Squarespace website. Now, all of these steps, all the things we just went through, it's all outlined in that guide that I made for you. It's either on the button beneath this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash learn to grab a copy of that guide because inside there, I have some codes for you to play with. Those codes you can copy and paste directly into your Squarespace website and start customizing. I've got some fun ones in there for things that have to do with fonts and color changes and one of my favorite codes, changing the color of a button on a hover. So I'll let you get to it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna learn more about customizing Squarespace, but most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.